Hi right, guys, here we are again, uh, looking up at the Starlink satellite. You can see it is still mounted on the roof on a couple of breeze blocks. That's caused quite a lot of uh, hate out there on, on the YouTube comments, but I don't really care. So there it is again. See it's balanced on a piece of wood here. Just lay on these uh, tiles. It could topple over at any minute. Any gust of wind could cause it to like fly off and disappear. Um, it's actually pretty stable. It's been there for over a month now. The, uh, the, the high winds haven't moved it at all. The other thing that I thought was quite interesting is that the dish doesn't really move much. I was kind of imagining it was going to be panning backwards and forwards across the sky. It's just always kind of fixed in that position, looking up at that area of sky there. As you can see, I do have houses around that block the, the field of view. But saying that, I'm getting a pretty stable connection now. There are some ups and downs. I, I've been recording data for the last 24 hours, so we'll, we'll have a look at that. Um, see the kind of the high and low megabits and the, the ping times. Um, I did listen to some of the comments, and one of the comments was to plug it in directly to the computer. So it is now connected directly from its uh, router to the network card via a cat cable which has given me a gigabit link between the router and the computer. So we should be able to get pretty good speed estimates there. The other comment is, yes, it should be mounted up at the apex of the roof, the highest point of the roof on a pole. Um, but yeah, it's not really something I want to do. I want it to be portable. I want to be able to move it about, do some different tests. Um, yes, I could put it on the apex, which would be the best case scenario, but that really wasn't what I wanted to test. So. Yeah, I'm quite happy with it up on breeze blocks. I'll show you that Heath Robinson setup again, just so you can really wind you up. There, see that? It could literally topple at any minute. Whoa, whoa, it's gonna fall. Yeah, so there we go. Um, yeah, let me share that data with you and we can start to determine whether or not this is a good alternative to dodgy broadband. Okay, if we use the app again here, we can clearly see that the dish is not pointing in the direction of the app so there's the dish and it's pointing in that direction and the app is clearly not indicating that that is the direction that the dish leads and it is still suggesting that the dish should be pointing the other direction it does look like this field of view slot has got narrower um, but yeah definitely don't trust the app Okay, so here we have the results from testing. Uh, I was doing the test from about three o'clock in the afternoon one day to about um, 4.15 the next day. In that period of time, I didn't use the computer. Uh, the only thing using the Starlink was the one computer that was doing this continuous testing. And I did around about nine or 10 tests per minute. So as soon as it finished one speed test, it would stop, give it a few seconds rest and then start again. Um, and we can see in that time, I've tried to graph the uh, down speed and the up speed on this graph here. Now this is what happens when you try to graph, uh, I think it's about 12,000 entries. So the computer does struggle a little bit to plot that out. Uh, we could obviously put far less entries in and get a nicer line, but really this kind of shows our uh, average speeds and we can also see our peak highs and our peak lows which is quite useful. You can see here the up speed uh, never goes above 20 megabits. It might go above 20 megabits. We'll have a look at the data in a minute and see if we can determine the max speed and as well the download speed uh, max is out here I believe, let's have a look up this end, no, max is out at 160, it did 160 megabits once as a peak, you can kind of see the average peak here is between, what should we say, uh, 150 and 140, those are the, the peaks along there, but more realistically if we kind of drew a line across the middle of this block here where it's nice and thick and blue, we could kind of say the average speed is about 80 megabits or something like that. That being said, um, quite often we're getting low speeds of around about, you know, 40. And every now and again, these blue lines here do actually drop down beneath this orange line. And I'd really call those drop connections. 
because I'm connected with the network cable, I can't actually determine that it was an absolute drop connection because the computer determines I'm still connected to the router, so I'm connected. Um, but realistically, when we see this line drop down below 20, um, sometimes it ends up down at zero, and those are really, I'd consider them drop connections. You, you would literally not be able to load a page. Um, you'd have to wait probably about 10 seconds and then you might get your connection back. How many times did that happen in this 24 hour period? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, about 24 times. We'll, we'll drill into the data and have a better look. Now the next graph I've got here actually shows the ping value we can see if we drew a line through the middle of this big blue block here that we can find our average ping is probably between 50 and 100 milliseconds. So probably 75 milliseconds, 65 milliseconds. That being said, it has dropped really low on one occasion. On one occasion, we were able to get a ping value of what's that? Six. Yeah, six milliseconds. That's really good. Don't know what happened there for us to get a six millisecond ping, but we did. Uh, more realistically, we're, we're down here uh, for the better end of the pings, probably about 25 to 30 milliseconds. And up the worse end of the pings, uh, probably about 130 milliseconds. And then we go through periods of it being much longer. Now, when I looked at this data corresponding to this one, there is some correlation but not anything I could obviously see so you would expect that maybe when the megabits is really low you'd get a really low uh, a really high ping value sorry uh, but that doesn't seem to be the case so you can have a low speed high ping high speed low ping high ping whatever um, so let's have a little look through these entries we actually have let's go down to the bottom and see how many we have we actually have um, 12,216 tests were done in this period and if I select let's say this column here and then figure out how to actually manage this data I believe we could sort this so let's actually kind of see what the highest or the lowest speed pings were now I've destroyed my graph but don't worry um, we'll forget about the graph for now let's shift that over here out of the way so what I've just done there is actually why won't that go out of the way go out of the way there we go so what we've done here is actually sorted these by speed and we've got these showing the lowest speed values now looking at these speed values here we can see we've got zero up and zero down. So these are particularly down times. How many entries have we got with that? Well, probably about 70 or so. 70 instances in our test where the connection was basically dropped. That being said, even with zero down and zero up, we uh, still managed to get 40 milliseconds, 124 milliseconds. So yeah you know it did did happen uh, there was a connection there but the uh, download and upload speed basically came out to nothing let's actually flip that round the other way oh that's not what i want to do let's grab that and flip it the other way now looking at it this way we can kind of see on average when we're getting a good uh, down speed we're getting a reasonable up speed as well the ping is quite low. Uh, we're also here getting 150, but the ping is 85. We're getting 100, uh, 147 megabit download, uh, 10 upload, 92. So gives you some idea here that the, the download speed, the upload speed and the pings are not really related. And then let's finally sort this by ping value and have a look at what the highest and lowest pings were. Um, so the lowest ping we got was 6.66 I don't know where that came from but it looks as if it's an error 
Um, we were also getting 53 and 13 at the time, and that was at uh, 7.43 last night. Um, yeah, I don't think we would have got 6.6 .6 milliseconds, but maybe. More realistically, it looks like we do get 23 is the um, lowest ping value that we've seen. And let's sort it the other way. And there we go, we've got the highest ping values we're getting are um, 284. That is actually showing at 284 milliseconds we were still getting 23 megabit download. Um, yeah, I mean, really, if you are playing a game, I've been doing a bit of online gaming using this um, just to try it out. And if you're browsing the web, you are going to notice those um, 284 millisecond pings. That literally means that every second you're getting less than, um, well, four, four requests for data. It actually takes longer um, for the data to be piped back for you. But just to initiate the connection and, and request the data back is taking quite a long time. Um, how long is it actually above that? What would we call a acceptable ping value let's say we go down to 120 ping how many entries have we got above 120 well that's roughly 120 117 um, 118 so we have probably about a thousand mm, there we go there we go exactly so we've got about seven uh, 673 entries with a 120 millisecond ping or above and if I bring my calculator up and uh, let's say that each of these tests was taking seven seconds um, 678 uh, times seven seconds divided by 60 seconds that gives us about 79 minutes in 24 hours where our ping value was above 120 milliseconds. So for the majority, you know, for over 23 hours, we were getting a ping above 120. So not bad. I'm quite, quite happy of a ping above 120 for most things. But realistically, uh, what's a good ping for gaming? I'm just going to Google that because off the top of my head I don't know. And the ping amount of 100 milliseconds or below uh, for most average broadband connections. Uh, so anything above uh, below 20 milliseconds is considered exceptional and a ping value of low is between 50 and 100 milliseconds. Uh, thank you to this website. So let's go back and actually have a look how many of those were uh, below 100. Let's go down to 100. 110, 109. Yeah, it takes a while to get through um, 12,000 entries in Excel. There we go, there's 100. So let's have a look at good ping speeds or low speed uh, sorry low latency pull that down yeah you can see it's a lot of entries so you know for the majority of the time it was a very good ping no problem at all uh, i'm just going to go back so we can have another look at the graphs before we finish off here come the graphs and there they are back to normal so you can see, for the majority of the time, it's absolutely fine. Um, but then there are these clusters. There's these clusters of, of time where it's not so good. And then certainly we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 instances where the, the ping was probably too high uh, for reasonable usage. I mean, by, by no means does that stop you from browsing a standard web page if you're going to just click on a page and um, see see something load back like the weather or the news. That will be absolutely fine. It will work really well. But probably for gaming or if you're maybe doing stock stocks and shares or you're working on live documents between multiple people um, or, or maybe, you know, running some sort of live chat forum or something it could cause problems. It, it could cause you uh, certainly long latency, but certainly things that feel like drop connections, even though maybe your satellite hasn't lost connection, but it is going through a transition period. So that's what I'd imagine is going on here at these high latency periods. 
is actually switching from one satellite in the sky to another satellite in the sky and of course you're going to um, get this problem. Now obviously as Starlink or uh, SpaceX put more satellites into space hopefully there'll be more crossover between the, the signals which means that that crossover stage will be reduced. That's hopefully what we'll see in the coming months. So it'll be interesting, um, give Starlink and SpaceX a few more months, um, do this same sort of test again, and then I'll actually come back and compare the values again, and we'll see whether or not these values are shifting up, or whether the, 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 the symptoms of the changeovers or the, the low speeds and high ping rates start to subside. Um, that being said, I'm not displeased with the service. Uh, we're still having drop connections on our normal broadband and when they drop and if they're for a period of time, we can just switch over to this, continue um, browsing or, or streaming and, and we can set most devices up to switch automatically between the two. So basically we've got a uh, backup internet. Now it is expensive for a backup internet but it may be in the future we're looking to kind of maybe move off grid somewhat um, and actually having a Starlink satellite will be a, a very useful device for that because we can basically get internet anywhere as long as Starlink support the movement or allow the dish to be moved within a small area. Of course, in the user agreement at the moment, uh, moving the dish to other locations is not permitted, but we'll, we'll see about that as the year goes on. Well, sorry to bore you with graphs and uh, 10,000 entries of Excel data, but hopefully that kind of quantifies where I was talking in my last video about drop connections. Um, I'm not just imagining it, that they're technically there, even though technically it doesn't actually lose connection. Um, there have been many more satellites put into space since we last looked at this data. So actually the, the problems I was having in the first week are far less now. It has improved greatly in a period of about a month or a month and a half. So yeah, hopefully that video was helpful. Um, you'll have to make your own decision whether or not you feel the investment is worth it at the moment. I have just seen that the government has introduced incentive to get gigabit network out across the country, but we, we know that we're supposed to all have reliable high speed internet already. So we'll uh, test that as it comes. Well, thanks for watching um, and stay tuned if you want to see more tests next time. Bye.